I'm Dean Safola and this is the Azure Academy. So today we're going to be talking about Azure Backup Reporting. So reporting is one of those things that uh, some people forget about. You know, it is important that not only are we backing up successfully and we can perform our restore successfully, but we also need to be able to show to others that we've been doing this successfully. Now, maybe in your environment, somebody on your team gets the reports right now. That person's responsible for making sure did last night's backups happen successfully. If not, we got to remediate the issues and, and get a good backup. So backups are a very key thing to the success of our business critical and production applications. But it's also something that um, we want to have in the cloud in a way that we can easily adjust, manipulate, do whatever we need to to see just the data we want and to present that data in a uh, simple to understand but yet interesting way so that people can consume just the data that they need and get it when they need to. So with that in mind, let's first look at our Azure documentation. We'll go under Products, Management Tools, and Backup. And then under our how to section, we'll see the configure backup reports. And this section is going to have everything that we're going to be going through for setting up reports. But I do want to point out in particular the prerequisites. Now we need a Azure storage account. That'll be key here. And we need a Power BI account. So all of our Azure uh, reports are done through Power BI. There are two other interfaces, which we can look at in a second. But uh, the reports that we're going to concern ourselves with today are Power BI specific. So let's go back to our Azure Academy resource group and we'll click on our backup vault. All right, so let's go to backup reports and diagnostic settings. Now I've already configured this and I'll tell you why. Um, when you first set this up and you set up the diagnostic settings, what you do is you check the box that you want to archive your data to a storage account and this is not the backups themselves. This is just the metadata and the reporting data uh, related to those backups that go into the storage account. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So we pick our storage account, which I've already done, and then you select this box for backup reports and however long you want to retain the data. And this is also uh, going forward. We'll see this when we talk about Azure Site Recovery. You can check all these boxes for site recovery data and retain the data so you can report on it the same way. So just to show you what it looks like to totally start from scratch, there it is, same thing, test, we check the box, we pick our storage account, we hit OK check the box for reports however long we want to retain it and we would hit save since I've already done all that I will discard now going back to our Azure Academy resource group this is our storage account and all of the data that we need will be in blob storage as you can see it's already here now I again went ahead and did this already because once you put the data into the storage account and you're able to access that data inside Power BI it takes about 24 hours before it's all there so digging in you can see goes through the providers so this is basically the same information of what we call a resource ID getting into our backup vault and then into our specific uh, container of resources and the actual backup data. So if you look at any one of these, these are JSON files and I'm going to download this file and open it so you can see what it looks like. So if you're not familiar with JSON, um, this is something that's going to be key for working in the cloud. Uh, JSON, again, stands for the JavaScript Object Notation. And I am not a developer by, uh, by my background. I'm an infrastructure guy. I work with PowerShell. But JSON is one of those things, in order to scale in the cloud, you really, really do need to know, um, if, if at the very least, to be able to read it. Now, for those of you who really don't know JSON at all, don't think of it like a PowerShell or a C Sharp or any kind of language like that. It's basically like the new version of XML. It's very, uh, very much like a, a library document. Okay. So what you can see here, these are each of the events or the items related to the backup. This is what we'll see in the report. So it's going to parse all this data and get the information about it. You can see we've got here the name of our VM and we've got uh, 
the name of our backup vault and what time it happened and that this is a backup report item and you can see that all through each of these so enough of that let's go back to our Azure Academy uh, resource group back to our vault and let's open Power BI now I already have an account if you don't have one you'll need to sign up for a account and in Power BI, you can see I have a lot of kind of uh, different dashboards already, but we're going to hit Get Data. And the data that we're going to get is a service, because it's Azure Backup. And then you'll be presented with this apps list, and there'll be a lot of things in here. And we want the one called Azure Backup. We'll hit Get It Now. All right. And this is going to load our data. So we need our storage account uh, information here which is this guy and of course you didn't need that big long string you just need the name of the storage account and you'll also need a storage account key so if we go to our documentation here so you get here so that's when it'll ask you for a storage account key now I'll do this behind the scenes because you don't need to see my storage account key so All right, and now we'll click on our Azure Backup for the first time. And you can see we have two different sections, our dashboard and our report. So the first thing we'll look at is our dashboard. And as you can see here, our data is going to populate in a second. And uh, it only takes this long the first time. And you can see right away why we use Power BI. It gives us this nice presentation of the data. We can see how many systems we backed up. Again, I don't have that many right now, and there's not a whole lot of data in there. But um, so it, it shows you what you backed up in a nice graphical form. You can click on any of these items and dig into the reporting side. And then you can see some more information. So our summary looks pretty much like our dashboard. And then you can dig into and see any one of our backup items. You can even click on the different items in the list and the reports kind of tweak themselves based on what data you're actually selecting. So it's very dynamic and it looks very nice. And then uh, you can see any one of the particular data points that happens to interest you or the group of uh, that you're a part of. So you can see how long jobs were taking. Um, and you can see here, this is when our initial backups were kicked off, and that's why we have a big spike here, because uh, the full backup does take longer than the subsequent backups, as you can see as well. And of course, alerts, I don't have any right now. So the other uh, piece of interesting information here, not only can you click on items to tweak what the backup view looks like, but you can also apply filters. And the filters are kind of like clicking on stuff. And as you can see, as I click through different items, the filters change because that's based on different data points that we're using. So you could also open these up and you could tweak uh, the data however you want. There's also a, a language that you can use, which I think is uh, based on the Crystal Reports uh, kind of language where you can just write whatever you want for the data. The data is all there in the storage account. You can manipulate it however you like is the point that I'm trying to make. And then uh, once you have these reports how you want them or you want to use the dashboard and send those things out to people, one thing that you can do to get this data out is you can subscribe to the information. And this is where you can set up uh, an email address or a distribution list to the backup reports. So I don't have another DL right now, but I'm going to call this uh, backup report and we'll say this is how our backups are doing today and you can set this for daily or weekly to send out these reports so I'll hit save there okay and I'll get that report uh, the next time that everything runs so that'll be by in the next uh, cycle which is tomorrow and then I'll be able to pull up that report show you what it looks like so one of the other things that I'll show you here is, if we go back to our Azure Backup, is we can share out the dashboard with folks using this. Uh, 
and then anybody else's email address or again distribution list uh, that you want to uh, to be able to send over to people and then whatever kind of message you want and then you can allow them to um, share the dashboard themselves and also receive email notifications for that dashboard and uh, the one other piece that I'll show you is under the reports this little light bulb this is the quick insights so one of the beauties of cloud data and machine learning and all of this uh, big data algorithms and, and things is that things can pop out to you that you would not have expected otherwise just from looking at the raw reporting data and then you can see different bunch of dashboards related to the data and here's our particular data trend for backup jobs over time and uh, when uh, backups have taken place, there's more of them that happen between the 3 to 6 a.m. hour than at other times of the day. So you could look at that as a way to say, is our infrastructure balanced enough? Uh, if we have way too many systems, maybe we're seeing performance hits during certain times because we've got too much load. Um, and this doesn't just apply to backups. This could be any data that you're looking to analyze. So there's a lot of data points that are in here. Obviously, the more data you have, the more insights you can gain from it. I don't have much in here. This is just a bunch of lab data. So there's not a whole lot here. But I wasn't aware of this, um, that I have more backup jobs in the 3 to 6 a.m. hour than at other times. So I may want to balance some of those times out and look at my policies and, and change things around a little bit. That's enough for the insights. Um, let me go over to my email. And so here's our emailed report. Uh, and this is in my webmail client, so yours would look a little different if you used a, a thick client like Outlook. And so gets in with our title. This is our backups are doing today, and you get a shot of the dashboard. And uh, there was a issue last night when the backups happened. And of course, if you click on this, it'll take you to the dashboard, uh, or actually click on the picture, it'll blow up the picture. And if I click on this, it'll take me to the dashboard, which we can see here. Then, of course, you can dig in and figure out what happened. From here, it's not going to give us uh, the exact details of what happened, but when things like this occur, you can then drill into the backups themselves. So let's look at our backup vault. And this is a good opportunity for us to look at some job issues so we've got our jobs here and it failed because there was a problem in moving the data to the storage vault so the backup itself happened so the snapshot was there it just didn't move that uh, backup into the vault at the appropriate time so let's look at this status message see if there's any issues currently and we're in uh, the east region Everything currently looks all right. So it looks like whatever happened was a hiccup from last night, but everything looks green. Here is a opportunity to look at backup alerts. And you know, here's the, the same alert information. And then if we look at configure notifications and turn this on, you can set an email address. Mike. Microsoft.com, and then you can set for how you'd like it and I'm going to make this a per alert so now I'll get email alerts uh, when particular things go wrong as well as we have our dashboards that are now being emailed to us so we can look at these things on a regular uh, basis all right and here it is so it's showing that dear customer, that's me, uh, Azure backup email alerts have been configured successfully for this backup vault in this subscription. And this is a test email. So any further alerts that happen in my backup vault, I would receive a email notification for as well as I'm getting the emails from our dashboard.
So between those two things and then combing through the reports and the backup jobs, a backup administrator should be able to identify here's what went wrong. And if you have your, uh, your roles segregated so that you have backup administrators and then people from applications who are also responsible to check their own backups, you could either grant them some of those permissions to look in the vault or segment those permissions. They would have to submit a ticket then to your backup team who would then dig into the alerts, figure out what happened. Um, in this case, in order to resolve this, uh, all that we need to do is either wait for tonight's backup or kick off a manual backup now and then we'd see if this is actually a issue in the storage or in the backup vault that we need to then submit a ticket to Microsoft to uh, dig into further. So that's where we go to help and support and then we could actually build a ticket in the portal, submit that to Azure support who would then follow up and deal with whatever that issue is. So that's backup reports uh, in general, and we've gotten to see a little bit more with configuring alerts, subscriptions to reports, email notifications of reports, and on alerting. So we've covered actually quite a bit. Thanks for joining us for this uh, session on backups. That completes our backup topic for now. Um, and let me know uh, in the comments what you guys would like to go through next. And if uh, I don't get any comments on, on what we'll do next, I'll just pick another area and we'll dig into that. Thanks very much for joining and we'll see you next time.